Alright, let me clarify something right off the bat. This video neither defends nor criticizes anything that Digibro says. It's simply meant to provide a set of factual data so that you yourselves can form your own opinion on the topic. If you're confused as to what I'm talking about, let me give you a quick rundown. A little while back, Digibro made a video on the topic of anime streaming and the services that provide them, both legal and illegal. This video was misinterpreted and many people began to make uninformed assumptions as to what the point of the video was. So I'm going to go through each of the points that he mentions from his Digibro After Dark video and then present all the data that I could find relevant to that point. Whether it be industry reports or financial data, I just hope there will be enough information here so that you will be able to form your own opinion rather than have the opinion of your favorite YouTuber. I know this is different from my usual videos, but the reason why I'm making this is because I am first and foremost an anime news channel, and the purpose of news is to spread useful information. I just want to help people to start to think for themselves, so whether you agree or disagree with Digibro, hopefully this video will help you to make a more informed decision. Also, I have a small background in business management, so doing data and market landscape analyses on the anime industry was actually pretty fun to me. Alright, now point number one. The legal anime streaming services offer a worse product than the illegal streaming services. With any product or service that a business offers, there are key components that determine that item's value to the average consumer. To help you understand the concept of product value a little more, what if those bootleg DVDs that were sold at those random stores in a sketchy mall were similar quality to the actual DVDs? The sketchy mall was also half the distance to your house in comparison to the retailer, and the price was 50% cheaper than the real DVD's listed price. If the product that you wanted was offered at both places, you would most likely go by the bootleg version since it has more value to you in terms of convenience, price, and location. In our case, the service at hand is the streaming of anime. So in terms of the components that we'll use to determine the value of this service, let's choose the most relevant ones and compare Crunchyroll or Netflix to Kiss Anime. Price is one of the biggest factors because it puts a numerical cost that actually measures a service's value. Crunchyroll is $6.95 a month, Netflix is $7.95 a month, and Kiss Anime is free, but it's riddled with ads. Then there's features such as quality, performance, and choice that would be judged next in the consumer's mind. Quality would be the video quality, so we know Crunchyroll and Netflix offer 1080p streaming with consistent performance, but with limited selection. Kiss Anime, on the other hand, is 720p, maybe upscaled 720p at some points. Each video is behind a capture security lock, performance can be inconsistent at times, but the selection of content is pretty much anything that you want. And then we have convenience and reliability, which would be the execution factors. This is based on the consumer's personal preference, but it's more likely that Kiss Anime provides a more convenient streaming service since it's more likely to have the show that you want to watch. Although high traffic can sometimes make the servers lag and videos load slowly. As for what the community currently finds to have the better value, let's take a look at the monthly traffic. According to SimilarWeb.com, a site that provides an overview of website traffic for the month, Kiss Anime achieves an average of 114 to 120 million visits a month, with each visit lasting an average of 14 minutes and 43 seconds, and visiting about 6.9 pages. But since Kiss Anime is a site with a global presence, it wouldn't be fair to compare that traffic to Crunchyroll's mainly American reach. So if we take the 25.42% of last month's 114.13 million visits, we get 29.01 million American visits. As for Crunchyroll, its American engagement for last month was 29.83 million visits, with an average visit duration of 9 minutes and 19 seconds with 3.97 pages visited. Although there was a sharp increase in traffic last month as compared to the months before, most likely due to the exposure during Anime Expo. So from this data, we can see that there is almost equal American traffic on both sites. So either the community is split 50-50 on watching on Crunchyroll and Kiss Anime, or they just use both sites to watch what they want to watch. So you decide for yourself with this data which offers a better service. Now if we were to compare Amazon's Anime Strike, the value for that is much much less than that of Netflix, Crunchyroll, or Kiss Anime, 
simply because of the massive paywall that it hides behind. And that brings me to Digibro's second point, and probably the most important. If you were to listen to anything this video, this would be it. So please, listen closely because this covers exactly how using an illegal streaming site could affect the industry, for better or for worse. Digibro's point was that the current business model for anime streaming services is poor. But what exactly is that business model? Anime is a global industry, and therefore requires a global model. But let's just focus on the North American side of things where licensing is the key. Netflix and Crunchyroll and Amazon place their bids on shows that they want to get the streaming rights to. If they win that bid, they get the rights to stream that anime on their platform after paying the licensing company the cost for the licenses to stream, a licensing fee which is a minimum guarantee of profit, and then royalties per episode. So where exactly does the money that you spend every month end up? Well, let me put it this way. Regardless of whether you watch a show on an illegal or legal site, the licensing company has already been paid the money they needed to make a profit, however minuscule it is. And they have already distributed that money to everyone else at the end of the chain. So the impact that watching on an illegal site has would be the loss of royalties from ad revenue, but more importantly, its effects on the legal streaming services like Crunchyroll or Amazon. Say Amazon had spent all this money to get the licenses for a set of anime over the summer season, but no one decided to buy a subscription to Anime Strike. The money that they would have received from that subscription would have been used to license more anime for the next season. Therefore, since the profits from the previous months were already spent by Amazon under the assumption that people would flock to their service just because of the shows that they offered, they would not make back the money that they spent. This would result in Amazon having to reduce the selection of anime for the next season due to lack of funds for bidding on new licenses. And they would also have to reconsider their business strategy since they would be operating at a loss. Any strategy that results in a loss of money is a bad one and has to be revised, which is why the one thing that I will agree with Digibro on is the fact that you should not support bad business practices. And I'll explain why. Right now, we have three major companies all competing with each other in the same industry, all fighting over exclusive rights to stream on their platform, thus segmenting an already niche market which leads me to the conclusion that they care very little for what's called the bargaining power of the buyer. There's a model called the Porter's Five Forces model, and it's used to examine the economics of an already existing industry. These are the five forces that have the power to shift the way that an industry is run. There are the already existing competitors, the suppliers, the potential entrants, the substitutes, and the buyers. We already know who the competition is. The suppliers are the licensing companies, the new entrants are the other minor legal streaming services, the substitutes are the illegal streaming services, and the buyers are us. Yes, we the viewer, the consumer, the buyer, we as a community have a stake in how this industry will develop. There are very few links between us and the streaming service and the supply chain, and the more of us that there are, the more power we have. Also, the fact that it costs us absolutely nothing to switch to a substitute that offers the same service grants us even more power in the industry. So what is my point exactly? By buying into a service that is poorly designed like Anime Strike, just because it is morally right, you are hindering the development of the anime industry for us in North America. Not for the studios, or the production company, or the artists over in Japan. They've already received the money they needed to keep themselves afloat. But for us. You can talk about how shitty their service is all you want. But if you keep paying them, then they really don't care because at the end of the day, they're making money. Sure, if we don't use their streaming service, we'll see a reduction of the number of anime available to us in the next season, but it will force these companies to revise how they provide their product to us. Or simply just make one of them drop out of the game completely and make the market less diluted and less segmented. If you have to, just choose one, but don't support all when they know so little on the market that they're trying to enter and who they're trying to sell to. Now for Digi's third point. Blu-ray is a dying breed. 
For this, I pulled up the anime industry report of 2016 according to the Association of Japanese Animation. According to this, in 2015, anime was a 1,826 billion yen industry, which equates to 1.66 billion US in estimated revenues. Of course, how much profit they made is a completely different thing, but this is still a $1 billion industry. As you can tell, there's been a steady increase in the market size, especially in the overseas section, which is the money related to licensing. And considering this is back in 2015, you can be sure that number has increased even further with Netflix and Amazon getting more heavily involved this year. But what I wanted to point out was the small purple bar that has been steadily decreasing over the years. That's the DVD and Blu-ray media revenue. Domestic, of course, but clearly there's a downward shift for this segment. If you're wondering what that green bar is too, that's merchandising. So all the anime-related souvenirs, toys, and whatever else, it takes up a pretty big chunk of the market. Digibro's fourth point. People will take the path of least resistance to get what they want. This overlaps with my previous explanation of how a consumer values a product or service. But as I mentioned, convenience and accessibility are a couple of those factors that are taken into account when valuing a product, especially in a time where nearly everything is instant. Take for example Whole Foods using drones to deliver groceries to people who are too lazy to leave the house and get it themselves. An alternate and easier method to grocery shopping was presented and people took it. Point number five. The anime market demographic is mainly kids who can't afford to use streaming services. This was a tough one to get some data on because I tried searching up numerous studies and surveys but couldn't find a thing. The closest thing to real information that I could find on the topic was a Reddit survey with 3,473 responses. Of course, this type of survey has what's called a sampling bias because it was taken on Reddit, but it will do to give you a small glimpse of the demographic, at least the R anime demographic. The majority are males between the ages of 17 and 22, so it's pretty much late teenage to young men. And people that age is a gray area in the money department since that's pretty much the time that you spend in university, and I'm sure you all know how much that costs. But do keep in mind that these are anime watchers that are also Redditors, so it's probably not the most accurate indicator of the entire market. However, considering the little data that we have on our niche market further proves how little data that Amazon or Netflix would have on us too. At least Crunchyroll takes the time to go to events, so I'm sure they have a pretty good grasp on who they're dealing with. Also, they can just data mine the user information for each subscriber. I wouldn't mind seeing that to see what exactly the demographic is for people who pay for streaming is. But anyway, now for the sixth and final point. Will a donation button work? Well, by giving money directly to a studio to make a certain anime, we'd still have to find a major licensor who is willing to buy the rights to legally stream it overseas. And in order for that licensor to buy the rights, they need money from the people to make that purchase. However, if no licensor picks it up, an illegal streaming site with the fan subs can still be used to watch it, and you still would have given the money to the studio to support the creation of the anime that you wanted. Of course, that's not the morally ideal situation, but there is also a legal workaround but it would most likely involve the creation of a completely different site or a remodeling of a current licensor. Sites like Funimation have already attempted to crowdfund certain anime to gauge the community's interest of it. So if we had a site that served as both crowdfunder and licensor with which we could choose the anime that we wanted to support and have it streamed to us on the same platform, that would be an interesting concept to say the least. But that's pretty much all the information I have for you right now. I could go on and on talking about how the business model and how businesses sometimes need to take a hit to become better in the future, but I wanted to keep this video as opinion free as possible. I simply wanted to present you with all the information that you need to make an informed decision yourself. Whether this video will do well or not, I don't know. If it reaches Digibro or any other AnyTuber, well, that'd be great because they hold a lot of power not only in the community but in the industry as well. But for all I know, this video might not even get 100 views and you all might think this is just the most biased thing you've ever heard. I assure you, that wasn't my intention. Anyway, if you made it to the end, I thank you for watching, or pretty much listening because I doubt I edited too much in this video. But as always, if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So until next time, ciao.